Let's uh, talk to my guest from the US state of Maine by Nancy Atwell, who's been named the world's best teacher for 2015 from Delhi. I'm joined by Dr. Amrita Vora, Senior Manager for Education at GEMS Education. And here in the studio with me is Dame Sally Coates, who has a long track record on turning around fading schools. Uh, thanks all of you for joining me here. To you, uh, to all three of you, first of all, in terms of, uh, I mean, any surprises the way this has panned out? Nancy, let me go to you first. I mean, world's best teacher, you've got to get the first word. Well, I don't think there's any surprise in terms of the way it's panned out for the U.S. It's, it's pretty consistent that a, a quarter of our students are um, below par, aren't proficient, even at the most basic level. And um, it's because of the poverty and the segregation in our schools. That percentage of kids um, is represented by children who really don't have the opportunities and the ambitions that middle class and upper middle class children have. Um, you know, we, we know that those kids don't have access to prenatal care, to early childhood education, um, I, again, to, op to opportunities. And so um, I, you know, would very much hope that at some point my country would address what we're going to do about these children. Well, because well, if you take to, them to, to out all of, of that the in mix, a moment, and I'll actually get you to describe. In the States who, I'll get you to describe what you're doing in your schools because it's fascinating the way that you organize it. But Sally Coates, I mean, what are they doing in Singaporean classrooms that everywhere else could perhaps look at and learn from? Well, I think they place a huge emphasis on education in those countries, perhaps more than we do in some of the more developed countries such as the United States and the UK. And um, they haven't got so much of a gap in their society as we have between those who do well and those who don't do so well. So in our country, we still have a big tale of underachievement, particularly in literacy and numeracy. And maths in particular is not an area we excel in. However, the UK has risen, I believe, in the rankings. So we are beginning to turn the tide. Uh, let's go to Amrita Vora because uh, in India uh, uh, we couldn't get data uh, for the OECD uh, from India but the thought is that uh, there is perhaps a little more focus on cramming than actually other forms of, of learning. It, would that be a fair assessment? Yes that's true. There is a lot of focus actually on our rote learning in our country and what uh, some of the systems that we are now trying to establish. I mean, since 2009, the CCE was introduced, uh, which was an attempt in a way to try and bring about some change, some focus on overall development, some focus on skills, uh, building of skills in education, which I think... Uh, Basic skills is what OECD is also referring to, and apart from those, some skills on critical thinking, on analysis, on creativity, on problem solving. These are the things that we really need to uh, focus on in education. So different ways I mean, of we different now ways feel of that actually having to, to learn. I mean, Nancy, your school, I mentioned it before. I mean, you, you ban formal testing, don't you? And you you have classrooms with libraries. Tell me a little more about how you have structured things much more differently than uh, perhaps more conventional schools? Well, in terms of literacy instruction, and that's my special area, um, the children at my school choose the books they're going to read, and they choose the topics they're going to write about, which means my uh, 12 and 13 year old students will read 40 or 50 books a year and produce maybe 20 publishable pieces of writing across many genres. In other words, um, they're not getting ready for the real thing. They're engaged in the real thing and they are engaged. These, these are kids who are finding intrinsic motivation in what they're being asked to do as writers and readers because they're satisfying their own worthwhile purposes. They're using literacy um, and they're finding, you know, pleasure and satisfaction in it. They're, they're um, their progress is extraordinary, but so is their passion. They like what they're being asked to do, and they become very good at it. Uh, very interesting. Uh, Sally here, I mean, uh, how, how important is the, the size of classes? Because uh, one sees that uh, differ, I mean, even in the UK, between uh, uh, private schools and uh, public schools. H how much of an impact does that have, the ability of teachers to just teach smaller groups? Actually, not very much. Um, research has shown that um, actually it's the quality of teaching rather than the size of class. So an excellent teacher could have a class of 50 and do better than two mediocre, mediocre teachers having classes of 25 each. I mean, you turn around failing schools, just briefly. I mean, what is 
the principal thing that you look at when, when a school is not working and the class is not working, the results are not working, what is it that you change? Expectations is the key really. It's all about having really high expectations and no excuses for failure. Whatever your background, you can do well and quality of teaching and putting, investing a lot in the pedagogy of teaching in the school. Uh, and Rita, back to you because uh, it was interesting. Uh, I've got some uh, uh, comments on Facebook uh, uh, from people have uh, actually sent in uh, and people making the point about teaching in India. One here from Abhishek uh, Chakraborty who says uh, uh, English learning is so bad in rural levels in, in India that even the teachers can't construct a sentence properly. I mean, is that harsh? Because I know you have uh, uh, some true, quite stern in views India, about teaching Indian teaching is... standards. Uh, right. So teaching today is still not uh, a profession that uh, people choose readily or people want to get into. Can I get this back? So... Well, I can see that you're having trouble with your earpiece, so uh, whilst you put that in, let me just uh, go back to uh, our, our website just to explain uh, another of uh, the very useful devices you could look into, because the OECD have done this because they want to make the point that actually if countries increase uh, their education levels amongst 15-year-olds uh, to the most basic levels, the impact that can have on GDP. So if you look at this particular section, uh, again, if I tap onto the computer, you can see that uh, Canada, the growth potential would be 94% if they did that. Uh, uh, South Africa, we were looking that, uh, was pretty low on the list. Look at that, 2,624%. That's how much they could increase their GDP if they raise their levels uh, to uh, the basic levels for all 15 year olds uh, and, and you can use that you can go country by country yet again as i was uh, showing you before so that again a useful device let me go back uh, uh, to uh, india and to amrita you were just explaining about uh, teaching standards in india and i think i'm right in saying that you have said that actually uh, perhaps people try other things and then go into teaching i mean is that really fair Yes, uh, that's not fair and we really need to, uh, you know, lay emphasis on the teaching profession as one of the coveted professions, value it in the country uh, because quality of teaching is really, really important. I also agree with what she said uh, about engagement and motivation of children and children owning their own learning process where they're allowed to choose what they want to read. I think that is the crux. So for this, to, do, to be able to do this, the teacher has to be trained how to, you know, trust children that much that she's able to let them have the ownership of their own learning. So this is something that we really need to build into our system so that it can move forward uh, on uh, real skill development. Uh, Nancy Atwell, uh, uh, is the danger of something like this, it, it becomes rather one-dimensional. We're looking at maths and science when actually uh, when you go out and talk to businesses uh, they say they just want rounded characters characters that can solve problems education is much more than just a couple of subjects Nancy Atwell oh yes I'm sorry um, well I think that um, you know one of the things that we need to look at is the number of kids who are in school um, internationally now has, has increased incredibly, but what they're being asked to do once they're at school you know, is now the problem. It's, it's, the, it's the instruction. And again, I think as much as we can make the learning authentic and make it um, you know, attractive to kids and engaging for them, um, then you know, we just have a much better chance of them thinking that you know, school is worthwhile and being ready for the world they're going to find out there because they've already had some tastes of it in their own schooling. I really think that, you know, that, you know the establishing order and, and getting kids to behave is one thing, um, having kids be compliant, in other words. But, but I'm talking about engagement, and I'm talking about excitement over learning, not cramming, but learning skills in the process of using them to do real things. Well, Nancy Atwell, Amrita Vora, and Sally Coates here in the studio. I wish we had longer, but uh, thanks all of you for joining us uh, for your comments on this particular study. Thank you to all of you.